Okay, we will start with reciting the Buddha's name. Okay, I'll ask people to join me in putting their palms together and reciting with me. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambutasa. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Sucheto Ye Alahati San Miao San Butoche. Okay, and then this is the verse for opening the sutra. Wu Shang Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa Bai Chen Wan Chen Nan Zhao Yi Wo Jin Chen Wen De Shou Chu Yan Jie Ru Lai Chen Shu Yi in English, supreme and wondrous dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered, even in a billion eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Okay, so because we're going to do the Medicine Master Buddha Sutra, so we'll chant his name uh, seven times. In English, Okay, ready? Namo quelling disasters, lengthening life, medicine master Buddha. 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 Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the first class of the Medicine Master Buddha Sutra. And what you see in front of you on your screen is Medicine Master Buddha. Uh, I thought I will begin today's class with giving people an overview of uh, the sutra and before we jump in into the actual text um, okay this is also my first time using zoom just like some of you and um, i'm also learning how to have my how to access my notes at the same time while talking to everyone and for right now, let's have my notes. Okay. Lecture points for discussion, that's what it's called. Okay. Okay. So the outline of the studio, okay, uh, I'm sorry, the <laughs> outline of the sutra. Okay, the, the title is called Sutra of the Merit and Virtue of the Fast Vows of Medicine Master by Druya Light Tathagata. Okay, did everyone get that? Okay, I'll say yes. that again. Let me show you Medicine Master Buddha. Okay, this is our sutra. Let me go right up. Okay, I'm sorry for all the scrolling. Uh, it might be a bit... Um, disorientating for your screen, but just bear with us. Okay, there you go. All right. Sutra of the Merit and Virtue of the Past Vows of Medicine Master Vaidruya Light Tathagata. Okay. So, um, how, how the sutra goes is like this. The sutra begins with Manjushri Bodhisattva asking uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, which is the Buddha of our uh, historical time. <clears throat> he wanted to know, he wanted the Buddha to talk about uh, more Buddhas and the vows that the Buddha had made. Okay, so this is how the, the, the sutra begins. And so it's, it's very interesting that uh, in this sutra, which is the Medicine Master Sutra, as well as the Infinite Life Sutra, which is known as one of the three great Pure Land Sutras. The Sutra begins with the Shakyamuni Buddha um, 
going explaining the vows first instead of saying who this buddha is and uh, all the benefits of uh, practicing or where did this buddha come from shakyamuni buddha in these two sutras and i'm not sure about other sutras because i haven't read that many <laughs> sutras he would he starts off with the vows and um i find that really really interesting uh, especially when we get to the vows section i want people to think about this you don't we don't have to talk about it right now but you i want people to think about the the purpose of vows uh, when i say vows means v o w s and and what is the whole uh point of of vows which uh actually i did not plan this but i can show you all something let me see okay i recently made a poster uh to i wanted to show what vows are uh but vows are kind of in, in, invisible, invincible, you can't really show, right, what are vows because vows are something that you keep in, inside. It's not, a, yeah, it's not something you can show, not like wearing clothes or something. Uh, so, but I really wanted to make a poster about what it meant to, to, to show vows. So what I did was I came up with this. And I'm going to show you now. Do you see it? So uh, the title which I give this poster is called uh, Pranidhana, which in Sanskrit just means vows. Yeah. Okay. So this is my first time doing a class on Zoom. And um, I find it a bit uh, strange talking to a, a, a microphone and a computer screen with no one in front of me. Uh, so what I would like to do is I would like to encourage everyone to, to try to join in as if you were there. And I mean, as if we were all together in the same room. And the only way that can happen is if people ask questions uh, or you have something interesting to share. Uh, or you heard about a story that's kind of related uh, or sometimes not yeah better if it's related to what we are talking about what you can do is you can unmute yourself you unmute yourself and then uh, just say what you need to say and if anyone else needs to add also just unmute themselves and join in this way I don't feel so weird and everyone feels like they are really part of um, a group, which is what we are. Okay, I see Melinda's um, microphone keeps on unmuting by itself. Is it because you have something to say, Melinda? You know, this is like the eighth time I, I mute you already, at, at least eight times already. Uh, Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, and everyone else too. Oh, I'm what do you call it? What to. Uh... Uh, increase the uh, speaker sound, that's all okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, in increase speaker sound. How do I sound? Am I loud enough for everyone? Yes, uh, it is loud enough. It's loud enough? Okay. If anyone has trouble hearing and uh, you need me to be louder, please just let me know. Uh, I see CF Lee microphone unmuted as well. You want to add something? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, Melinda again. Can you? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. So yes. So this is the poster I made. Um, it is. This is how I wanted to show uh, vows. And before I go in to uh, explain um, uh, I just want people to think about think about vows for a moment and the importance of having vows for practice. Huh? 
And uh, when we come to the part of the sutra when it talks about vows, then then we'll, 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 we we can discuss more. But uh, it's best it, to discuss if everyone uh, has has some thoughts about it too. Okay. So I see uh, a chat from Chui. Okay. Sometimes if you don't want to say something and you want to share a thought or an interesting uh, fact or article uh, to everyone, if you touch your screen. Okay, you touch your handphone screen or your um, computer. On the bottom right, you see a button called More, M-O-R-E. And then uh, when you click that, it has, let me see, uh, disconnect audio, raise hand, hide my video, hide non-video, show name. Ah, huh, where is the chat box? Uh, Okay, you have to uh, click on participants and then at the bottom you will see a chat box, uh, uh, the box called chat and then you click the chat and then you, you, you will be able to send messages to people and I can see everyone's messages too. Everyone can see your message but if you want to send a private message, you can only to that person that you choose to and this way we can communicate through a uh, chat box as well. And if you have done that, you will see that Chui just sent a message to everyone saying we are using free version now and limited to 40 minutes in my cutoff. Yes, that's true. Uh, especially since I started the meeting at about 4.55, uh, thereabout. So we actually have less time. But I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe Zoom is being very generous. Zoom has just sent me a message saying that the time limit of 40 minutes has been taken off. So we can go longer than 40 minutes. If you want to go for two hours, <laughs> uh, no, you can do it yourself. I won't be here. Uh, let's try for the first class about 40, 45 minutes for today. All right. Okay, so we've gone through the outline. Uh, sorry, we've gone to the, the first point of the outline where this sutra begin. Okay, so uh, Yap H H sent a message to me privately. He says, can we say a wow is a promise between ourselves and the Buddha? Well, this is something we can discuss. It's a very good point that you brought up. Um, and this is something that we can discuss when we come to the section on wows. All right. Um, okay, so this sutra began by Manjushri Bodhisattva asking the Buddha to talk about Buddhas and their wows. Okay. And the Buddha that the Shakyamuni Buddha uh, chose to talk about was Medicine Master Buddha. Okay, Medicine Master Buddha, let me bring up his image again. There you go. There he is. Um, I have other pictures as well. Oh, no, not this one. Um, let me see. Yes. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, there you go. This is the Medicine Master Buddha statue at BBM. It's about, it's not very big. It's about maybe four inches high. And it's made from glass. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's opaque. If you shine a light, what I wanted to do was to shine the light from the bottom, but I didn't have enough time. Yeah. Uh, so this is what we have in our long life hall. Other images of Medicine Master Buddha. Uh, this one, this is what's in the MMA Museum, Museum of Modern Arts, I think. Uh, it's a pretty old, faded uh, image of Medicine Master Buddha, flanked by his two bodhisattvas, which uh, I will introduce later when we come to the sutra. And other pictures of the Buddha that I have. This is the cover of Medicine Master Buddha um, on a book cover uh, uh, in Japan. Okay, he's holding a medicine pot on his uh, left hand. That's one of the icons of Medicine Master Buddha. He either holds a plant, uh, a medicinal plant called a mybrolan, or he holds a, a pot or a bowl. Okay. Uh, we've seen this. Uh, this is this is a both a bowl uh, and the um, the flower. 
And then um, this is another image of Medicine Master Buddha. It's not very clear, but on his left hand, he's also holding a bowl. Okay. And um, the next two pictures is Vaidura or Lapis Lazuli. Okay, Lapis Lazuli is blue. And this is another uh, icon of Medicine Master Buddha. How you want to recognize Medicine Master Buddha is usually in blue color, like this. And then I have another picture of Lapis Lazuli. There you go. This is uh, a nicer blue. Um, so he's usually depicted in blue color. Okay. And uh, right hand, let me go back to his right hand is palm, palm facing towards you and touching the ground. And left hand either holding a medicine pot or the, marble, the a medicinal plant. Okay, Melinda, uh, I'm going to mute you again. <laughs> if you can learn how to mute yourself. Uh, okay, Melinda, there are two kinds of mute. One is you mute your speaker, which you don't want because then you can't hear anything. The other one is you mute your, your microphone. Okay, I think you, what you want to do is mute microphone. Okay. Um, okay, then the Buddha uh, outlined um, the 12 great vows that Medicine Master Buddha made before he became a Buddha. Okay, so that's just one hint for a wow. He did not make the vows after he became Medicine Master Buddha. He made the vows before he became Medicine Master Buddha. Okay, and I am 99.99% .99 sure, but just in case I might be wrong, let's go to the sutra and let me see. Okay, let me see. Let me increase the size of the page. Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay, you see, it says um, the first great vow. I vow that in a future life when I attain Anuttara Samyat Sambodhi. Anuttara Samyat Sambodhi is Sanskrit for perfect enlightenment, meaning become a Buddha. Okay, so in other words, he would have said, I vow that in a future life when I attain Buddhahood, my body will shine with dazzling light that will illumine measureless countless and boundless worlds. My body will be adorned with the 32 heroic features and the 80 subsidiary characteristics and I will enable all beings to become as I am. Okay, so that's the first wow. So I won't go much into the first wow um, today. Yes, uh, we still have the rest of the outline to finish. And I'm just making a note to myself um highlight what are the 32 hallmarks of a buddha when you become a buddha you get 32 hallmarks uh physical characteristics your body because of the your perfection of virtue uh you actually have 32 hallmarks what are they well um for example, let me see, like the Buddha's hair is blue in color. Uh, that's one hallmark. And the hair that grows uh, curls in, in, in all the hair curls in the same direction. Uh, I won't go into the 32 Buddhas, but when we get to the first vow, please remind me if I forget, uh, I can show you all a PowerPoint slide that I made many, many years ago. Uh, during the 10,000 Buddha repentance uh, that contains all the 32 hallmarks of the Buddha. Um, why was it done during the uh, uh, Bible repentance? In the Bible repentance, as you bow, the every hundred bows correspond to uh, one virtue of the Buddha. Okay, so after every hundred vows, there's a verse 
that corresponds to the hallmark um, virtue uh, leading to physical hallmark of the Buddha. So I think the first 3,200 bows or 3,200 bows uh, is related to the 32 hallmarks of the Buddha. So a Buddha has 32 major characteristics. Um, as you look at your screen now, you see his hair, you know, that little, uh, they, what do they look like? I don't know, look like little rounds. Uh, apparently in real life, the hair, if you look closer, the hair grows in, in a circle. Yeah. Um, and then like on top of his head, you see, uh, let me see if I can, I can't draw, but I will circle my mouse around it. See this top part? That's a flesh cow. That's also another hallmark of a Buddha. Uh, so a Buddha has 32 major hallmarks and I think 80 minor uh, physical characteristics. Yeah. So it's very interesting because uh, one of the monks, before I became a, a monk at CDTB, during the buying repentance, they wanted to make a presentation. So I made a, a PowerPoint slide. Okay, carrying on. Um, so then Shakyamuni Buddha outlined the 12 vows made by Medicine Master Buddha before he became Medicine Master Buddha. Okay, and then the sutra goes on to explain that Medicine Master Buddha always has two bodhisattvas next to him. One is called the Universal Radiant Sunlight Bodhisattva or uh, we usually call him Sunlight Bodhisattva. And the other one is called Universally Radiant Moonlight Bodhisattva. Okay, for those who follow the CDTB, our DRBA morning ceremonies, uh, we, we chant the name of Medicine Master Buddha as well as the names of uh, these two Bodhisattvas. Can someone tell me who else has two... Um, Bodhisattvas always with them. I give you a hint. His land is called the pure land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha Buddha Fasu. Yes. So who are Amitabha Buddha's uh, left and right um, bodhisattvas? Quick, quick. Uh, in 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 Mandarin, okay. Okay. Uh, Guan Xin Pusa and uh, uh, Tas Tas Pusa. Yes. So there's Guan Yin Pusa. Uh, English also we call Kuanim Pusat or in Sanskrit Alokiteshvara and uh, okay let me see I always get this wrong uh, Great Strength Bodhisattva right the other one am I right come on you guys help me hello anyone there yeah you are right it's yes. Great Strength and, uh, and our Alokiteshvara uh, Great Strength in Sanskrit uh, let me see I want to say his name right Maha <laughs> Mahatas Pabra. Okay, let me see. Let me Google. Google can be very useful. Okay, Google. Okay, great strength. Bodhisattva is Maha. Okay, Maha Sta Ma Prata. Okay, Maha. Uh, let me show you what Google say. Okay, there you go. It's a bit small. Okay, that's in Sanskrit. Okay. Uh, so, like Amitabha Buddha has Kuan Yin Pusat and Krishnan Bodhisattva uh, in the west, in the pure land of ultimate bliss. In the east, we have Medicine Master Buddha flanked by Sunlight Bodhisattva and Moonlight Bodhisattva. And just like Guan Yin and Great Strength, uh, Sunlight and Moonlight Bodhisattvas are the leaders for the, uh, the Pure Land for Medicine Master Buddha. And when Medicine Master Buddha retires and go become you know, a Bodhisattva, we, we reborn uh, in another place to help people, uh, these two bodhisattvas will become the successors. Okay. And then the sutra then goes into Chakamuni Buddha explaining 
the benefits of hearing um, the name of the Buddha. Uh, and this is a bit funny because he explains the benefits of if you heard the Buddha's names in past lives, in former lives, which means that now you have to really make sure you hear the Buddha's name. That means in future lives, you get a lot of benefit. That's one way of seeing it. Okay, I just see, I just saw a message from, okay, from uh, Chong Fei Shan. Say, Fasha, I actually saw a Buddha's image upper half during the first time I sat in meditation, still a big uh, bracket, still a beginner, close bracket, during Amitabha Buddha recitation. The look was just like what you have described. I wasn't sure if it was really a Buddha then because I haven't seen one in real life. <laughs> okay, that's really good. Um, uh, a lot of the images of uh, the Buddhas that we have actually come from people who have act who uh, either doing meditation or doing recitation or they're just walking or they see... Uh, Buddhas in real life. And that's how they can draw uh, images of Buddhas. Um, since we don't have a time limit, I'm going to set a time for us to end, which is in 10 minutes. Okay, and then we can do a poll online uh, through WhatsApp if we want to extend it or we want, or if 45 minutes is a good time uh, to have a class. Um, I, I have a Based on uh, Feishan's uh, anecdote, I have a story to share about Goji. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone here knows who Goji is. Uh, Goji is a Vietnamese. Um, uh, he's from Vietnam. He came to the U.S. when he was very young uh, as, a, as a refugee. And he's uh, one of... Berkeley Buddhist Monastery and CDTB DRBA is very strong uh, lay supporters. Uh, he's been to Malaysia before. Uh, and uh, he has a few amazing stories. One of which is when he, as a young child, when he left Vietnam on a boat, uh, I'm not sure where he ended up. Was it Malaysia or Hong Kong? I think it was Hong Kong. Uh, the seas were really... Um, uh, choppy and uh, I think it I think they said that he, he felt like the boat was going to to, to, to capsize to sit uh, the boat could have overturned and, and, and sunk so if I remember correctly he said there was someone on board reciting the Buddha's name and he was sitting uh, high up and he said that I think I'm, I'm mixing facts from a different story, but both the same. Basically, Goji said that two fish, very, very big fish, I, I guess they were whales. I, I, don't, I have not asked him how big the boat was, but I guess maybe like a, like a big sampan, you know. He said there were two fish who came to either side of the boat to support the boat. And that stabilized the boat. Yeah, so that was, uh, that's not the story I wanted to tell you, but uh, he has a lot of stories and just none of the stories. So the actual story I wanted to, to, to tell is uh, he and a bunch of other workers, including his wife, were helping renovate Chingkang. Chingkang is the restaurant at CDTB, the vegetarian restaurant. So this was many years ago, and they were rushing to get Chingkang ready. Uh, I think there was some fahoy that was going to happen. Uh, or they were, they had a deadline to meet. That's all I remember from his story. And so they were working every night. They were working until very late and then going home. And so Kochi lives in one of the cottages at CDTB, which is just before uh, the administrative office, if you've been to CDTB. And a bunch of them, very late, I think it was after midnight, you know, 12, 1 o'clock. And CDTB, after 10, is very dark and very quiet, especially with all the street lights uh, switch off. If you don't, if the moon is not out, you can't really see uh, your hand in front of your face. Everything is just really dark. So they had finished working on Chingkang and they went back to their house and they were about to sleep when 
it was either him or someone was outside and they saw it's hard to describe he saw the buddhas and bodhisattvas and uh our hearts in the sky melinda you have to learn how to mute your microphone so okay so he came out and he saw the buddhas all in the sky like you've seen those chinese paintings of buddhas bodhisattvas in the clouds you know and all the arhats all on the on the, on the side he said it looked exactly like that and he ran in and he called other people to come out they didn't believe him but when they came out uh they were they just started to bow <laughs> they just started to bow to all the, the buddhas and bodhisattvas in the sky and uh he said that uh great strength bodhisattva uh has that animal that uh they call it a lion but actually it's not a lion it's a it's a mixture of of it, it has characteristics of different animals uh he said that dog was running around like trying to play with them or trying to scare them he would the, the dog would run towards them and then stop and then run away again yeah uh so that story i uh Feishan's, uh comment uh reminded me of that story so i thought i just wanted to share and then uh miss yap says okay i had read that uh, the Buddha comes in many forms, can be anything in giving help to those in need. Can I know how true is this? Um, for your question, Ms. Yap, I would point you to um, the Great Compassion Repentance uh, or to Chapter 11 of the Lotus Sutra, which talks about Guanin Bodhisattva. Uh, Guanin Bodhisattva is usually depicted with many hands. But there are also uh, images of Guanin Bodhisattva uh, with many heads as well as the, the uh, Guanin image in the City TV Buddha Hall. Uh, I would point you to that sutra uh, for you to read first. Yeah, uh, Felicia, I see your microphone is unmute. Do, do would you like to say something? Uh, yes. I think uh, that is not great strength to this tower. The animal belongs to Mansuri Bodhisattva. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the animal was uh, like a playful dog, Koji was saying. Uh, uh, Manjushri Bodhisattva's uh, uh, companion. Yeah. Uh, and Koji said he, he felt, he actually felt scared. <laughs> the animal came running towards him. So it is really, really hard to imagine. I can't imagine how that would look like, you know. Um, yeah. So the next time you all see Koji or you get to meet him, uh, ask him to share this story with you. Okay. So going, continue back with the outline. So the Buddha uh, outlines, talks about the benefits of hearing the names of the Buddha in former lives. And then uh, the Buddha talks about how Medicine Master Buddha, after he became a Buddha, he contemplated all the sickness and all the suffering in the world of all living beings and how he made a wish to want to uh, dispel them. Yeah, uh, We have less than five minutes left for today. Uh, I would like to know if uh, anyone has any questions or any feedback. This is the first time we're having this. Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, talking about vows, uh, once ah. we have made a vow, do we ah. need to uh, repeat the vow in front of the Buddha every day? Do we need to re Okay, so Melinda's question is, once we have made a vow, do we need to repeat the vows? Um, uh, to long, long answer, short to make a long answer short i think wows if you understand what wows are wows help you practice wows uh, uh, yes sorry uh, continue okay wows help you change your habits your bad habits wows are the way that you transform yourself so 
I think in the beginning, it is really, really helpful to always remind yourself of the vows that you have made. That's why in our ceremonies, we always have the three great vows. I vow to save all living beings. These are the three great Mahayana vows. I vow to save, I vow to do all good. I vow to stop all evil. And I vow to save all living beings. We always recite it in our ceremonies. So you rely on your vows until you become a Buddha. That's what they say. So um, if you find yourself, like say someone, I, I use a very simple example. Uh, if I want to practice patience and I want to be more caring and get less angry and upset with people, if I still find myself getting angry and upset, it means that I'm not reminding myself of my my vows or my promise. So so yes, like three agree, say three say yes should be repeated daily. Yeah. So it's like precepts. You 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 remind, remind, you repeat until you embody your vows. It's, you know, you if you if you get what I mean. Yes. Yeah. Karuna, you want to say something? Karuna, I see your microphone is unmute. Do you want to say something? Oh, sorry. I pressed the wrong button. I'm in the Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, okay, now trying that, to okay. Still. okay, now that everyone can hear you, is there something you want to add? No, no. no. Thank you. I'm in It's a joy to be here. Okay. Again, I would like to ask for everyone to please uh, uh, chime in. Okay, I feel very alone. I'm all alone in this room right here. Okay, actually that's not true. I don't really feel alone, but um, I don't see anyone. So if people could unmute and join in anytime they want, that would be really great. Alicia, do you yeah. unmute on yeah. purpose? Yes. Yeah, I enjoy this talk. Okay, I'm enjoying it too. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a uh, dedication of merit. And uh, we will, I'm going to show the PowerPoint slide so we can uh, uh, chant together. And then if you have any feedback on the WhatsApp group, please give your feedback, okay? And for those people who are unable to join, I'm going to share the recording of the, uh, the yeah, Zoom automatically records. So once it's saved on my computer, I'll share it in a Google Drive and then uh, some people like my mother who can't join because she has things to do during this time, uh, you all can listen to it on your own time. Okay. Uh, Inga sir. Yes. Uh, there, are, there are three persons uh, yeah. which I'm, I'm sure, uh, yeah. but I can tell now. Uh, I mean, uh, Sharon Lee, Tan Chi Peng and Huawei, I can see the picture is Miss Wong. Uh, she oh. on her camera. Ah. So three of them, I hope they can hear. La. If they can hear, then okay. La. Because uh, not, when you don't see the, the microphone, meaning it could mean they cannot hear. <laughs> okay, okay. I thought Miss Wong is Siu Siu. Siu Siu is not Miss Wong. La. Okay. Maybe right, everyone, she connected uh, two devices. La. Okay. Uh, All right. So everyone ready? First, first uh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm Siu Siu. I'm using only handphone. So I, I didn't connect it twice. Okay, so Susie, you're not this long, or? No, 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 I'm not. Okay, okay. All right, thank you for the counter me so you can see in her pictures. <laughs> okay. Uh, oops. Okay, everyone ready? I'm going to put my palms together and do a dedication of merit. May every living being, our minds as one and radiant with light, share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness, luminous and bright. If people hear and see how hands and hearts can find in giving unity, May their minds away 
to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. May kindness find reward. May all who sorrow leave their grief and pain. May this boundless light dispel the darkness of their endless night. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. Okay, we can do three bows to the Buddha. You can close your eyes and imagine seeing the Buddha in front of you, like Feishan. Okay, first bow. Second bow. Third bow. Bowing respect to the Venerable Master. First bow. Second bow. Third bow. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, Elvin, your microphone is... Okay, it's already on mute. Okay, if everyone has any um, feedback, please post it on the WhatsApp group. Okay, Amitofo, bye-bye.